bad vibes. Don't like <laughs> red flag. Feel free to run away from therapists who just like give you this energy that they will not be willing to. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before or hi, welcome if you're new. My name is Mickey, I'm a therapist and we talk about therapisty things on this channel. Uh, first of all, before we get started, I wanna say hi, thank you to all of you who are subscribed to the channel because we recently hit 100K and I'm so excited about it. Um, obviously like filled with gratitude, all the things, never thought this would happen, all of the cliche things that all the YouTubers say, but I just wanted to say thank you because it's a big deal, so. Thanks. Anyways, today we are talking about five red flags uh, to look out for when you're looking for a new therapist. I think this is super useful information because I always have links in the description for you guys to go find a therapist if you want one. And I think it's useful to talk about the fact that not all therapists are created equal. And sometimes therapists have red flags that are important for us to avoid. So just as a quick disclaimer, by the way, um, I did recently have my tonsils removed. It's a long story, I'm not gonna get into it, um, but my voice is a little weird. People have been telling me that my voice sounds different. I don't I don't know, but if it sounds different to you, um, that's why this video also might be super short because it's still kind of hard for me to talk. So uh, thanks in advance <laughs> for your patience and consideration. Anyways, I also wanted to be clear, I think this is a nice place for me to clarify that all of the content on this channel is intended to be for educational and entertainment purposes only. This channel is not, has never been, will never be a replacement for therapy or intended to be therapizing people via the internet. Not only can I not do that, it's literally fucking illegal. So um, these are intended to be like useful uh, educational points for you guys. As always, take what works, feel free to leave the rest. I just wanted to provide these in the hopes that uh, for those of you who are looking to find a therapist, either a new one for the first time, maybe you can weed out some of the ones who are not a good fit for you. Thing number one, if this cler <laughs> therapist. Okay, thing number one, if this therapist claims to be an expert in everything, red flag. The reason that I included this in here, especially for like therapist search engines like Psychology Today in particular, but I think like Therapy Dan and other places, you have the opportunity to list what your expertise is, either in like presenting issue or with like a therapy modality. And the tendency is for, especially for new therapists or therapists who are new to private practice, to list all of the goddamn <laughs> modalities and expertise and issues, um, and this is a problem. First of all, that's impossible. No therapist is an expert in everything. But second of all, when we do this, usually it's because we're trying to cast a wider net in the hopes that we'll get more clients into our practice. And first of all, if you're a therapist, stop doing this. This doesn't serve your best purpose. Maybe I'll make another video about that another time. But second of all, if you're a client on the receiving end of this, to me, what this says um, is I care more about getting clients into my practice than I do about finding the clients that are my like sort of soulmate fit, my ideal client who need help with the issue that I have a lot of education and expertise and passion for, and that's an issue. Uh, you very much deserve to have a therapist who not only has expertise and knowledge in the area that you need help with, but also a therapist who's like really passionate and excited about working on those issues. It makes a whole hell of a lot of a difference when your therapist cares a lot about the issue that you need help with because we have like extra skin in the game. And so when therapists claim to be an expert on everything, this is just like really, like there's not really a way for this to be a good or valuable thing. Red flag number two, if your therapist describes themselves in a very savior-y way, that's an issue. The reason that I wanted to include this is because sometimes folks are drawn to the field of therapy and like the helping profession. Ma'am, the reason that I included this is because if a therapist is using language to describe themselves as if they are like the savior of people or as if, like if there's this energy of like, Echelon, please stop it. Come here, come over here. If they have this energy of like, you're so welcome that I'm willing to help you with this issue. I personally take issue with this as a clinician, but also it can lend itself, <laughs> it can lend itself to issues um, in terms of boundaries, in terms of like role confusion, um, and especially in terms of like the therapist doing work that's guided by like your best interest. It's very important in the helping profession. Obviously we're here to help people. And in some ways we do help people or like save people from themselves, I guess, or like bad relationships or whatever, right? But the reason I take issue with this is because therapists are supposed to have very clear boundaries about like the way that they can intervene in a client's life. And also we're supposed to view ourselves as like a part of your journey for like the short amount of time that we get to interact with you. But ultimately you as the client are the person who holds it's like all of the answers to your own questions, first of all, but like strength and resiliency and power and empowerment, all of these things are things that you possess. Um, and so therapists who really view themselves as like God's gift to therapy, we can run into power dynamic issues. We can run into like disempowerment for clients. It can also just feel bad sometimes. And so like 
This is, in my opinion, very much a red flag. She said, wow, this room's so boring. Why would anyone want to be in here? <laughs> okay, goodbye. Red flag number three, if your therapist doesn't offer a free consultation. Maybe this is a bit of a hot take, but I think it's very, very important for therapists to be willing to give you the 15 minutes for free, either on a phone call, usually it's a phone call, sometimes a video call, just to feel out, first of all, what is a client looking for? And second of all, are we a good fit? This is like a very key and important and also normal part of the industry. And if your therapist really will not give you 15 minutes of their time to ensure, first of all, that the therapist isn't wasting their time, but second of all, that you're not wasting your more time this is an issue to me like personally this is just my opinion it feels cheap but also I think again we can kind of run into this issue where therapists are just not really wanting to give somebody the 15 minute consultation potentially there's issues with the way that we view ourselves and like the boundary setting and all of that stuff there so um, it is very much okay for you <laughs> to be annoyed or to say no thank you you're not a fit for me if your therapist won't even have a consultation with you red flag number four when therapists say, well, I've been doing this for X amount of years and so therefore I get to tell you what to do or I am right about this issue or I know for sure how you feel about this. This is a big fucking problem, especially you can see this sometimes in uh, therapist bios like on Psychology Today, Therapy Den, blah, blah, blah. Um, usually there's a section for, for like a little write up about our style, our you know, way of being, whatever. And if a therapist leans on their experience only, I think there's like a myriad of issues here. First of all, it doesn't matter how many years of experience a therapist has, they should never tell you how you feel or tell you what to do specifically. It's not up to therapists to be issuing directives or to tell you about your life because it's not our life. We don't have to deal with the consequences of the choices that you make. So it's wholly unethical for a therapist to like issue marching or yeah, marching orders. But second of all, the problem that I take with this also is that if you are leaning on past experience only, there is the potential that that therapist is not immersing themselves in new learning, which is an issue. Therapy and psychology is a ever evolving field and it's something that we're continuing to learn more and more about every day. There is a reason that continued education units are built into licensure requirements for most professions in this field. It's because we're supposed to be making a, a good faith effort to keep abreast of like the new knowledge and research and information and modalities and, and practice standards and all those things. So typically you'll see therapists at like the very end of their career sort of leaning on this. We're like, well, I know so much about this field and so I'm done learning. I don't need to learn anymore because I'm so knowledgeable. I'm so experienced. And again, kind of this energy of like, you're so lucky to have me as a therapist. Bad vibes. Don't like <laughs> red flag. Feel free to run away from therapists who just like give you this energy that they will not be willing to validate new experiences or learn more about things that they haven't encountered before because it's very normal and also I think a necessary part of the field that we're doing that. Red flag number five is a little bit of a different one. Anything that gives you weird vibes. I think sometimes as therapy consumers, we get caught up in this thought that like, there is a right and wrong way to be a therapy consumer. That's not true. Therapy is inherently personal and it is very much customizable <laughs> to the individual. And so I have my own personal things that are like red flags when I'm looking for a therapist and those things wouldn't necessarily work for other people. But I wanted to include this because we all have a sense of intuition. We all have our own likes and dislikes and preferences also. And I think it's very important to honor that sometimes we just get a weird feeling from somebody. Like I've had clients express to me before, for example, that in searching for a therapist, they found one who seemed like a good fit on paper, but they really looked like a problematic family member <laughs> that they had. They just didn't like the way that their bio was structured or they have really bad grammar. And so that really bothers them. Like these are all valid reasons, I think, for someone to say like, thank you, but no thank you to a therapist. And I, I really want to encourage folks to trust themselves and to look inward and really honor that your lived experience, that your likes and dislikes, your wants and needs are reason enough to say yes or no to a particular therapist. So trust your intuition, trust your gut, give yourself permission to say no, even if someone else is like, oh, but on paper it's a good fit, it doesn't matter. If you don't like it, if it's not gonna work for you, then it's not gonna work for you, like that's fine. Like I said, I wanted to do just a short one for today, both for me and for you. <laughs> um, if you guys want more red flags about therapists and things like that, I have a bunch. Obviously I'm a very opinionated person, so I'm happy to talk about it if you guys want me to do that more, but I hope that these are helpful to you. Please let me know in the comments if you've got thoughts, feelings, suggestions, or if you have like weird individual red flags about therapists, I would love to know. What 
what those are also. Thank you for watching. Thank you again for subscribing if you've been here. If you haven't subscribed, go subscribe because we just hit 100K and I'm very excited about the channel growing. So like the video if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow, and I'll see you guys next Saturday.